wanted to ask you about, you know, this, these special episodes that you did that are sort of, I guess, between season one and season two uh, are very, very different in a way stylistically from the series itself. I mean, it's much more restrained and, um, you know, again, just, just, just not what I was expecting from Euphoria. And I'm curious what your initial conversations were like with Sam Levinson about the, when did you find out you were doing these special episodes and what did he tell you about them? What were the sort of uh, initial discussions the two of you had uh, about these, these very unique episodes? Um, yeah, so these two episodes were also uh, kind of the products of the pandemic. So it, it happened really quick, to be honest, because we, we were about to shoot season two and, uh, and we got shut down uh, in April, I think. I, I'm not sure about the timeline, but... Uh, and then, um, and then um, Sam Levinson, um, director, writer of the show, came up with the idea to do it like, do like a restrained um, version of, um, of Euphoria just to keep us going because we were we had this like you know we were pretty cranked up and uh and uh ready to shoot and uh and we had all this energy and um and um nowhere to put it so so um so i think um he came up i think after two weeks we got shut down he came up with the ideas he had um um an idea of a scene that, that took place between these two characters ali and rue in a diner and that was the basis of of, of this ep the first episode, uh, and I think he wrote it pretty quickly. Um, and and it we went into production pretty quickly um, as soon as we could figure out um, how to how to make it work in the pandemic. Um, we we were sh shooting, and so so we we didn't had a lot of time to prep it and to to discuss it a lot uh, like all, over and over again. It's more like an experimentation of what what this show could become in season two, and I think uh, also it I think encouraged us just the way things got more simple and and we we got to explore a side of this show we would probably never explore. If the pandemic was not happening, uh, I think it gave us a lot of courage to to push uh, push it in a direction that we never expected it. So, how do you, how do you think the work on these episodes is going to inform what you do on season two? I mean, how do you think your approach to season two is going to be different than it would have been had you not done these episodes? Uh, I think it's just just uh, a, it gave us a lot of courage with pacing and and just to, to be more courageous to to just sit on scenes longer even if not in a direct way but i think definitely like stylistically uh being more simple and is um is, is something that we learned might be powerful sometimes and uh, yeah yeah i felt like watching it you could tell that you and levinson and you know the other filmmakers you really had a lot of confidence in the actors i felt like you weren't getting in their way and you know really it was it really was serving what they were doing and that leads me to a question for both of you because the acting on both of these shows is fantastic and i'm curious how each of you sees your role as a cinematographer in terms of serving the performances and sort of creating the best kind of environment that can facilitate great performances because clearly you're you're Clearly, you're doing something right because I, when I think of these shows, I think of just you know, great acting all the way around. So it's uh, yeah, obviously this episode, the diner episodes, is it's basically about their performance, and um, uh, it's basically two close-ups. My job was to 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 to, to make them uh, to, to support that basically, and obviously give it a little bit of rhythm visually just so we're not just sitting really on two close-ups but um uh, but like i think as opposed to season one like small decisions became so important uh and and so, since it's one location or basically one location two actors as opposed to like 150 locations and uh thousands of of characters this this was really something where you know where we couldn't expand like um uh, horizontally so we try to dig a little deeper and work with those limited tools we had and um, and uh, and really just you know like a, a certain angle of a close-up became so important or just like tiny choices just moving the camera an inch became like really 
a big thing, a big decision. And um, yeah, and just to finesse those details, I think that was basically my my job. And and the, the, the other thing was was that we got to make this in in order to shoot this in order, which is a very rare thing in film and TV production. And uh, it really gave us the opportunity to 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 understand the, the rhythm, how we how you use a close up, how you use a, a wide shot, how you, you because you get, as you shoot it, you get a feel of what you, this scene requires, what this line of dialogue requires, what this little, um, um, when you need a little breathing room where you have to get really get like that wide shot and stuff like that. So that, that helped us and that, that was a good experience. And obviously the two actors are amazing and, uh, and uh, it, was, um, it was just a lot of fun to just watch them. <laughs> So figuring out those visual rhythms when you were, um, you know, when, when you do want to close up, when you want to pull back and all that stuff, is that something you were figuring out as you shoot, responding to the actors, or did you have any kind of plan going in? Did you have any kind of shot list or anything like that going in of like what, where you thought you should have a certain angle or a certain size shot on a certain line, or is that all just done on set in response to what the actors are doing? Yeah. So we obviously have a plan and we, change it all the time so i think uh it's it's really important to have like a pretty good plan or a, a pretty precise plan and we almost especially with sam we almost change it well, almost every time we change it on on set it's just you have to respond to what's in front of you and um and obviously you get inspired by the actors by the location by and there's always a better angle there's always a better way to to shoot something and uh, i think it's it's a constant it's constantly evolving hopefully in the in the right direction <laughs> so uh for the diner was that a real diner or was it a set or was it a lo real location repurposed to be a diner how did it's that a all... real diner in burbank mm -hmm. uh, and so Frank's what restaurant. kind of conversations did you have with the production designer or or the location manager i mean what 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 went into choosing that particular diner and what kinds of things did you have to do to modify it to make it work for your purposes? Yeah, uh, it's Jason Stewart, who uh, our, our production designer, he is, um, I, th I don't, th so I think uh, his, la, the New York City apartment at the beginning of the episode is more representative of his work because that's on stage and it's like, a, a, I think it's a great set he designed. This we, I mean, we scouted everything, um, um, like I think, like I think I've seen a lot of diners in LA, like or yeah. around the LA area, because we have a couple of diner um, uh, scenes in, in in season two, and this was meanwhile we were prepping that, so we just went for the best diner we we knew around and um, and and shot there, um, it just like the most cinematic and more where we you know it's uh, which which gave us the most options and the most uh, angles um it was a pretty obvious choice and then they did um, uh, a little bit of a redress to it um changing fixtures and um and and just dressing the surroundings we were because it's 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 glass almost like in two like 260 degree it's it's glass around and uh, and um and you have like um a little motel on the on one side you can see the whole street and the opposite side of the street on the other side. So they really had to to make it look like a, 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 a living surrounding around it. Um, and then we had to light that as well. So it's not really just a diner. It's a diner plus two streets and a motel around it. Whenever I watch the show, I'm always like how the camera movements are like so insane. How on earth did they they like this do you have to like how do you do you just uh, adapt and or like how i just it's, yeah it's, it's such a, such a feat i i to be honest on the euphoria I tried to plan bigger than what we dis than what we actually plan and that gives us a little bit of a wiggle room to uh to change on the day and um and um Sometimes, if, so for example, if I'm not, I'm not sure if I need a certain tool and don't tell this to production, I would rather go and get it than, than not have it on the day and miss it because we just decided to, to shoot the other direction. But uh, it's always worth it. It's, I mean, in Euphoria, whenever we made these kind of decisions, it was always worth it. And I think sometimes it's coming from me, sometimes it's coming from Sam, but I never really... Um, 
I, I never felt that it wasn't worth it. Oh yeah, this is this uh, this set. Um, Jason designed the New York City apartment. We gave him a couple of reference photos from like it, they were photos of the old Chelsea Hotel from the '60s, and uh, but he did like an amazing job, I think, with this. And um, yeah, it's a sunny afternoon, and uh, actually, it's a sunny morning, and uh, uh, she's leaving uh, for school. Yeah, I think this is basically because of the of the next shot, which is uh, this long shot going through the the mirror and that connects us to the to the next uh, scene. Um, yeah, these are the, the the shots when that you what we were talking about. That you really have to. To, to design and design the set around it. And uh, and this is something you can't come up with on the day. Or even if you come up with it on the day, you have to be very lucky. This is a, a a a stitch in post, and now we are in the in the um, in the diner. It's the same mirror in the diner, and we had to match the tiles and stuff like that on location. And I think we shot yeah we shot the second part of this uh, this shot first, so we had the diner part of it uh, first, and we had to to. Um, to match that in the in the end of the first part of the of the shot, which was a, pretty much a challenge. You have to align the tiles and the, everything in the frame. It, it was fun. <laughs> now I know on uh, the first season of Euphoria, based on what I've read, you were shooting uh, several different formats, and you shoot some was digital, some was film, just all kinds of different stuff. Uh, for this episode, what were you shooting on? Were you shooting on film? Or this, was, shooting... this episode is entirely 35 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And then the other special episode is partially 16, partially 35. Mm -hmm. And so how was the decision to shoot it all 35 arrived at? Uh, to be honest, we always wanted to shoot it on film the first season too. We were just not really allowed to. For the... mm -hmm. But I'm actually, I'm happy that we went with um, with the, with the with digital for the first season it's, it feels a little more contem contemporary but I we're 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 changing a little bit of visual direction and uh and um and I think film w was a choice for season two and and we this is this was these two episodes were to explore those ideas and and obviously we stick with with film what uh, what film stock were you using, and how was it chosen? It was the 500T. I think it's a great stock, and um, and um, um, sometimes I push it a stop and um, and make it a little more grainy. Um, uh, and also in the second season, we we use Ektachrome, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, uh, it's uh, we asked Kodak to manufacture 35 millimeter Ektachrome, which was I think discontinued in 2003 or something, and now they're they're doing it again and uh, and it's it's exciting and sometimes we're shooting like night exteriors on the stock which is a hundred iso stock it's it's a little bit of a nightmare but but it's when you get it right it's rewarding <laughs> oh, i'm like loved watching those two little episodes but i really need that full uh season two of euphoria so i'm looking yeah. forward to that yeah i yeah. think next year <laughs> Good. Well, I'm, uh, you know, as I said at the beginning, I'm a huge fan of both these shows. So this has been fantastic. It's been great to, uh, and I admire them even more after hearing you both talk about uh, the process that went into them. So thank you guys so much for coming and talking about the shows with me. And uh, thanks everybody else out there for watching. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.